The history of surveillance of black and brown people goes back to the time of slavery. We know in the 18th century in New York City, there were lantern laws that required black and indigenous people to carry around a candle after sunset if they were in the city. Going through the 20th century, surveillance tactics continued against black and brown people. J. Edgar Hoover, as director of the FBI, required that all black college students be surveilled. In the mid 80s, the DEA instituted Operation Pipeline to stop black and brown drivers and to question them and potentially detain them based on a fight against the war on drugs. And that continues to this day. We know that cities around the country have engaged in surveillance tactics against Black Lives Matter protesters. For example, in Boston, Memphis, and New York City, we're seeing emails and other documents that show that they have used social media to surveil Black Lives Matter activists. And the FBI is using surveillance tactics to identify and surveil what they've deemed Black identity extremists, people who are generally engaging in free speech, First Amendment protected activity, including Black activists who are part of Black Lives Matter movement. When we see governments, including the FBI and local governments, employing surveillance techniques, we know that Black and Brown communities are more likely to be targeted and are more likely to suffer consequences, including being arrested, being detained, and even being killed. We must listen to the voices of protesters. We must listen to the changes that they are demanding. Stopping law enforcement's use of facial recognition technology is one step that we can take. It won't stop systemic racism, but it will take one powerful tool away from the institutions that surveil black and brown communities.